Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my NHL 20 franchise mode here in the state of hockey. Hello and welcome back to the Minnesota Wild franchise mode. I'm so excited to be here and just before I started recording, yes I'm recording at 1.30 in the morning because the sleep is for the weak people, thank you very much. I checked my statistics and we just hit 200 subscribers so in like the last day I've gotten 20 subscribers and if you guys are sharing with people who you think may enjoy this I appreciate that so much I appreciate that so much all your support the comments daily you guys are really enjoying these first two episodes and hopefully you enjoy this episode because it's about to get very very exciting. There are some exciting things going on here in Minnesota. We are currently 16, 21, and 4. The month of December really brought us back down to earth. We were playing 500 hockey, usually above it, but we'd win one, lose two, win three, that sort of thing. In our last 10, we are 2, 7, and 1. And a question I asked last video, are we contenders or are we pretenders? And I ask that question with every franchise mode I've ever played. Are we going to be a contender? Because if we make the playoffs, how good are we going to be? Or we can take a few years just to rebuild this team. Shape it into a younger core. Of course, we have to keep the two Albatross contracts in Zach Parise and Ryan Sutter. Just for this franchise mode's sake, it's very important to Minnesota's history that those contracts finish here in the great state of Minnesota. It's it's an important time in Minnesota's history. Do we because the general manager right now for the Minnesota Wild is signing guys to make this team better but then going ahead and trading away Jason Zucker for a first round draft pick. I'm not sure what he's doing, but I have one clear goal in mind, okay? Even even if we're contending for a playoff spot, yet alone a Stanley Cup, we're not going to be good down a race because we're currently five games below 500 and we need, let's see, let's see, the last wild card spot is 41 points in the West. We are currently sitting... We are currently sitting at... Uh, 36 so look at how far we are out of it even we have to make ground we have to make ground on this team and that's going to be hard enough as it is okay so I'm, I'm going to talk about the positives and i i said yesterday in the episode i'm going to keep a look at kirill kaprasov and the first thing i'm going to show you is how incredible of a season he is having with the Iowa Wild. We'll start off with something positive and then and then lose it. Kirill Kaprasov in 34 AHL games this season, he has 36 goals. I've never seen anybody score at this pace in the AHL. Very much re reminds me of uh, Gary Mayfeld. Mayfield is playing in the 2019-2020 season. Kirill Kaprasov is demolishing the league. The most positive thing right now is that he's growing, slowly but surely, and he's a depth forward, so he isn't going to be mad playing top minutes in the a AHL. Okay, and the most positive thing here, he has seven game winners. He has, count it, 20 power play goals. If you take away his 20 power play goals, he's still the leading goal scorer on this team. That is incredible. He is having an incredible season and we need him to just keep going. We need him, we need him to keep it going. I mean, there's a few other guys here that aren't performing too terribly. Eric Zanek with 21 points. He's minus 9 though, which is nah. Matthew Boldy, our first round pick last year, or I didn't have any control over it, but he's jumping up in overall as well, and that's exactly what I need to see from the guys. I do want to check Kapanen, or Kakonen, sorry, 
914, he's a 96 overall, so potentially a backup next year. I'm not so sure about that. And why did I exit? I really didn't have to do that. We will check the NHL stats. I want to go over my plan. And you know what I love right now? You guys. You guys are the reason I stay up till 4 o'clock in the morning every day to bring you this franchise mode. Because the criticism, the... Or the Constructive criticism is always welcomed. Yes, now I know Marion Gabrick is not from the Czech Republic. Okay, I get that. I'm sorry. But a lot of you have been really consistent, like saying, hey, maybe you should go with this. And there are a lot of suggestions. Obviously, some of you still don't recognize that I can't trade Oi Parise and Sutter. I'm sorry. I'm going. It was a great idea from one of my subscribers. I really appreciate the ideas. Always throw them in my face, even though my recording episodes is weird. Some days I record five in a row. Some days I just record to the day, you know? Eric Stahl was the one guy that I saw being talked about a bunch. I'm going to wait closer to the trade deadline to get something done for him. Okay? He could potentially grow in overall. He could... I think the trade value is going to go up higher when it gets closer to the trade deadline. Guys like Koivu, who has one, left, one year left on his contract. Eric Stahl, who has two years left. It's an important, an important, important trade deadline. That's how we started things out in Columbus. We traded away guys for picks, for assets. And there's one team that wants to trade with us. One of our biggest rivals ever, the Colorado Avalanche. Obviously, I'm going to talk about this later. But they have offered us a few pieces, and there's a few pieces that I want back for a few, of, a few of the guys on this roster. But the biggest positive right now is Eric Stahl is a point per game. You rarely see that as a 35-year-old in the NHL. Kevin Fiala is the best part of the season so far. I just think that because he's second in goals, or he's tied for second in goals, he's tied for he's second in points. And he's been good defensively. Not a lot of penalty minutes. Pretty decent plus five. Especially on a team that is so weak defensively. Or uh, the forwards aren't the best. I mean, Matt Zuccarello is performing pretty well. He's not dipping in overall. And that's a contract that I do want to get off my roster before he starts dipping. Because he is 32. It's bound to happen one of these days. Gerald Mayhew, 28, uh, 29 points, minus one. I want him to score more goals. He's at he's on pace for exactly 24 goals. Obviously, I want him to go out there and be a decent player. He's playing third line time. He's playing with guys like Donato and Greenway. And there's a there's a few positives. I mean, Parise is 27 points minus 10 though, which is rough, which is rough. But we obviously cannot move him. Miku Koivu, who is definitely on my list of guys that could potentially be moved by us. Just because he's 36, why would... I mean, hockey players are lo more loyal than any other sports. You know, ba baseball guys leave he season in, season out. Basketball guys go to the hottest team in the league, usually. I'm not saying that in a broad sense, but it's, it's the most casual case. NHL players, if you're a franchise player on a terrible team, you have the odds of staying there or be traded. You won't leave in free agency. So Mika Koivu obviously has a case for coming back to the Wild, but he is 36. Doesn't have a Stanley Cup. Doesn't have a lot of achievement achievements in the NHL. So a guy like that who's aging, who can help a team win, definitely going through the playoffs. So he's definitely a candidate to go closer to the deadline as well. Galchenyuk, I will throw him on the block, but I don't think he would acquire too much. Obviously, that's cap that I don't want to bring back next season. Greenway hasn't been too bad. He's also progressing. He's an 80 overall now. Kunin isn't having the best season, but he is growing slowly. But surely, playing the fourth line time is going to be good for him and our two worst players, Hartman and Felino. I was hoping Hartman would do a bit better just because I like the player that he is. Two-way forward, third liner. And he's not a bad overall player. Okay, now let's talk about our defense. Arguably the strongest thing about us, Matt Dumba, 30 points as a defenseman. I I do like that. Now, there is going to be something quite controversial this episode. I 
am not the biggest fan of Jared Spurgeon. He was leading the defense in pl- in plus minus and points for m- the majority of the season. He was he was a pretty solid performer, but we're halfway through the season. We're about a month away from the trade deadline or just under that. Okay, it's time to make a decision. He just signed that new contract in Minnesota. Personally, I would be regretting that contract extension. It brings him till he's like 37 or something crazy like that. And I don't like that idea all that much. I do like an 80 overall, an 84 overall defenseman, but we could easily go out in the first few years once we're competitive to go ahead and get a good defenseman. There's plenty of them in free agency when we'll have the cap to go out and get a superstar, but I don't specifically like I like Jared Spurgeon he's a good defenseman but I think the way we're going right now he would be better off becoming assets to make this team better overall obviously there might be a few first round draft picks on the table for him Brodeen is obviously a trade chip but I I don't hate him he's been pretty solid on a pretty bad on a pretty bad season all around He's a plus two, our best plus minus as defenseman on this kind of team. Not a lot of penalty minutes either, and he does have one game winner, which is a clutch. Ryan Sutter, thank God he's not declining this season. It doesn't look like he'll decline this season. I could totally be mistaken, but 16 points minus four, especially one of the most or one of the best. Yeah, he has, he's three minutes behind Dumba. Dumba is playing major minutes this season, which is good to test him out. But Sutter, playing 23 minutes as a 34-year-old, he's not going to get any better, obviously. But it, it, we want to make sure his... There's not a lot we can do to control this, but we don't want his decrease to be so sudden. We want him to be a solid defenseman right up until we're a contender again, which is a few seasons. His contract might might even be off the books by then. Goaltending. Devin Dubnik has not been the best. There are obviously some incredible goalie seasons this year. Carey Price, a few other guys, obviously the top guys in the league. But Devin Dubnik, especially on a pretty bad team, Staylock and Dubnik have not been the worst part of this team. Obviously, they're not helping with their performances, but I also need to credit them with helping us tank. And I think that's what I'm going to go for right now. Obviously, you have your usuals leading the league, league in points, and we'll obviously check that out. Now, there is a trade that I do want to make. Okay, Colorado has been talking to us. Colorado has been talking right into our ear. Colorado has a lot of players on the block and they want to go for it right now. And I don't know why they want to trade with a rival. And there is a guy here in Alexander Newhook. If you don't know who this kid is, I think he was one of the most underrated players in uh, two drafts ago. Or was it? It might have been this past draft, actually. It was. It was, yeah. This kid. I think he's tied with the most points in the NCAA. Had like a five-point night the other the other evening. This guy's going to be good. Colorado got him at like 16th overall, 17th overall. A fantastic pick, or 12th. I can't really remember, but it was later than I had expected. I thought this guy was a top five pick in the draft. He's going to be good. Now, we do have the assets to bring that back. Or do we look to maybe a Timmins or a Bowers or a Cot? We can get that. But they did offer us a first-round draft pick this year and a first-round draft pick next year. And I want to start this off right. We did something similar with the Boston Bruins in our Columbus franchise mode where we traded Cam Atkinson away for two firsts, a prospect, all that jazz, but Cam Atkinson is a solid player, and I think it would be beneficial for this team to trade him away now before his contract worsens. Okay, now we did, or did he have more trade value the last time we checked? I think he did. Pros trade, yeah, okay, so, you know what, we're gonna sim up about a month, and because last, I turned my PS4 obviously off before I uh, started editing the video yesterday, <laughs> but apparently they don't want to make that trade at this very moment. I'm going to sim up to the trade deadline. Let's let's go one more month. Obviously, I want to bring this team to 
to the bottom of the league. We're not, we're about fifth last in the league right now. So maybe a month right here, see what we're at. Everybody wants a pick. Now I'm going to actually try something. Uh, I know this is a trick in a bunch of franch franchise modes. They go to their surplus and wants, and they, uh, they just, this is a trick. I forget who taught me this or forgot who taught. I'm not really good at English anyways. So you just go to forwards, any, and it gives you a wide range of selections there. You go to defense and then you go to goaltending. And this is supposed to give you a lot of trade offers and especially with a lot of teams gearing up for the postseason, Colorado being one of those teams. It, they are a rival, but there is the exception where we're not rivals at this very moment. This could be beneficial for both sides, especially with Colorado trading Tyson Berry away last year. They did get a great or a very solid two-way uh, centerman in Nazem Kadri. I thought he could have been a Selkie candidate uh, a few seasons ago. But sometimes I trading Tyson Berry away definitely hurts you. So if you could get a solid defenseman in Jared Spurgeon, that is something you might want to do for guys who aren't going to make your roster and benefit you right at this very moment. So one month, 16, 21, 4, a few days off and play the Winnipeg Jets. That's two loss. That's a few losses in a row there. I, I'm okay with that. This season is a wash. Obviously, I don't want us to struggle. I mean, obviously, I want to be one of the worst in the league, and it looks like we got another win. Two straight wins there. Okay. And then we get crushed there against... So that's two straight losses. So after th three straight losses, we get a pick up a regulation win. Minnesota. But it does look like we are bottom of the Central Division. Now, my scouts aren't being the best this year, but I do know the top guys in the draft this year. I'm not sure if there's any super creative players. You got Chad Chadson, <laughs> Oliver Shoddy, a few awesome guys here. Quentin uh, Quill Valentine. There are a few guys here that are created. Next three drafts are just going to be great. But the main prize that I'm aiming for right now is either Alexis Lafreniere. There's a few guys here. Stutzel, Drysdale, Rossi, and this guy right here who I've almost been, been convinced over in the comments that Marcus M Miranov... Might be a fantastic defenseman to bring on, bring on, especially if we trade away a Spurgeon. Oh, oh, why no? Colorado, we're not doing Kevin Fiala. Kevin Fiala has been great this season on a pretty poor team. We beat Detroit, obviously. Detroit's just that bad. So we are at the end of G. Oh, okay. Colorado. Uh, Colorado. Me, Erickson Eck. 77 overall, oh, dude. I don't think he's gonna get much better. And he's a sniper. You know how I am with snipers being in my bottom six. And I don't know if this guy's gonna become that. And you, oh, that is a few years ago that would have been controversial. But that's two first round picks that we can turn into valuable assets. Miku Koivu going over to the Colorado Avalanche for two firsts. I feel like that's worth it. They're, and they just take the salary off our hands like that. I mean, and, and I know it's one more year. But we'll have awesome assets to add to the roster in the future. Koivu's trade value isn't going to get much better. And we still have a lot of assets here in uh, Zuccarello. You have Brodine. You have Spurgeon. You have Stahl. You have a lot of guys that you can go and be like, ah, yeah, let's do it. Now, hold on. How about we talk about Dubnik? Do they want... They don't want Dubnik. So you know what? They do have a solid goalie tandem there in in Colorado. So you know what? I'm at, I know they're going to be a good team. But we thought that about Boston too. They, won out, they went out there, won, cup, uh, won the cup in year one. And then they finished right out of the playoffs. And it moved up to first. So how about we try that yet again? Miku Koivu, Joel Arison Eck to the Colorado Avalanche for a 2021 first and a 2020 first round pick. Good luck there in Colorado. Now that does hurt. I'm not going to, that takes a lot. That's going to take a lot to fix there. Now, who, who are we bringing up? Who are we bringing up? Who is the guy that's going to come up and be a man? 
How about we go with this Strum guy? Not the worst guy in the world. There's a few guys that could replace him in the AHL right now, which I'm not too worried about as long as Kaprasov's having a good season. I'm having a good season. So, you know what? Just to make our team not the best, Strum is going to get the chance. Younger guy, maybe uh, proving himself there. But do I go ahead? No, there's going to be a plus three there on that third line. There, Ooh, I love them. Okay, but now we have... We No, why am I going into the power play unit? We still have the ability to trade away Spurgeon, Brodeen, uh, per, not Parise. We have Eric Stahl, who is up to an 86, might I add. Zuccarello. Those are my guys that I'm like, they can, they should probably go while their trade value is the hottest. Oh, we right, we traded Joel Arisonek. I'm so sorry about that. So we'll get Will Bitten in here because he's a nice little prospect there. Nothing super important, but might as well get him in the lineup. Then we'll get uh, Dumont into the lineup just, just to make us a li little bit better. Okay, now, okay, AHL, you gotta be like that. Okay. Throw who, I, I literally don't care who goes in. Bipilpidu works for me. I know there'll be a minus one, but Kaprasov is a beauty. So we are at the most St. Louis. Obviously a first would be, how good is St. Louis right now? I, no, 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 no. St. Louis ain't that good, are they? 20, 22, and 9. Oh, but that's Greenway. I like really like Greenway. And he's 22, and he might be a really solid player for us down the stretch. Oh, would they... Okay, I'm willing to do Eric Stahl. Okay, I'm willing to do that. We could always flip Steen for something. Anything else here that could go the other way? Would they do an Alex Galchenyuk? That's a, I don't think they do that. Would they do they want Devin Dubnik? Would they do that trade? Trade rejected. You know what? We're gonna wait up right until the trade deadline and then look and see what we could potentially get. So 20, 26, and 4. Uh, of course I'm gonna look at it. Strom is a pretty solid player. He's not having the best 2019, 2020 season, but I think he's a nice little kid there. 83 overall, 22 years of age. But we have a great defenseman here and a future awesome left winger. That And we get Seabrook's contract. That doesn't make any sense. Eric Stahl for a first and Connolly. I can wait up. I think there's more that we could get. I think the trade deadline is at the end of this month. Okay. Okay, so we are currently... Let's see, let's see. So, the worst team in the league are the Oilers. So, we are fourth last in the league. Eric Stahl has 50 points in 50 games. Having himself a great season. And I do like Eric Stahl. I would love to keep him on this team. But we can go out there and acquire assets right now. We're not going to compete. We're 20, 26, and 4. We're one of the worst teams in the league. And I want to be a lottery team. I want that chance at an Alexis Lafreniere to build our team, or potentially that defenseman, which could really, really work for us. I mean, Fiala's having a good season. Zuccarello's not doing too bad. Mayhew had uh, five goals. Or no, five goals? I can't remember how many was that, but 17. He can totally hit 25. He can have a 25-goal season. Parise, not a great plus-minus, but we're not the best of teams anyways. Galchenyuk, uh, we can definitely try him out on the block. I don't think we'd get much for him, but it might be better for us just to hold on to him to see if he grows into a solid player for us. Donato, he's in an 80 overall and not growing, really. He's upset about ice time, even though we're playing him plenty of places. Cool. Greenway, still an 80. That's good. Kunin, still a 79. Hartman, Fel uh, Felino are doing the best. Defense... Yikes. Dumba only had two points that month. That is... That is rough. And... I, Spurgeon... I do like Spurgeon. I'm not gonna lie. Spurgeon's a good defenseman, but I... Alongside that cap, it might just be better. Because if we save that cap, we can go out and acquire another great defenseman pretty soon. Once we're ready to take that jump. But he's only making us better right now. And I don't feel like it's worth it at this point. Ryan Sutter... 18 points. Ah, uh, still an 88. That's all I care. Brodeen, not the best, but 
the actually the best plus minus on the team, but we took a slide that month. Goaltending. Devin Dubnik stayed at about or exactly the same save percentage. I can't remember his goals against, but 331 is not great. Those are not Vesna numbers. Actually, Stalock went up in save percentage, and I think his goals against went down. And then we're gonna look at uh, you know what we're gonna we're, we're gonna wait to look at the entire league. I think we're not totally obsessed with that right now. We'll obviously check at the end of the season, but I just I feel like it's time to make one of those trades. Make one of those trades happen uh, because if you're not watching the NHL as it is right now, there are a lot of trades that have happened in the last 48 hours, and it sucks that I started my franchise mode and all these. All these changes happened, but uh, let's throw Eric Stahl. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Eric Stahl, what? Man, what can we get for you? Is there anything that's changed? Anybody want a piece of Eric Stahl? I know there's a team out there that potentially would want a guy like him. Florida, two seconds. That's not what I'm looking for. Martinez, why would I do that? Two seconds, no. Lindgren, no. Keandre Miller, who is in a bad defenseman, but... We need a f I'm looking for a first. Winnipeg. Stanton's not too bad. Green isn't too bad. Ooh, Hinola. Ooh, that is a player. 77 overall at like 19-something years of age. He's a... That is a good player to bring on into our future. Obviously a great young defenseman. Probably should be a better potential. It's 18. This kid is only going to be better... He's going to be better right off the gate. Okay, Minnesota, let's talk. Let's see if it would be in our best interest. So we'll, we'll take your first next year, okay? And then uh, what did you want? You wanted a... Did you want Devin Dubnik, another awesome goaltender? No, you don't want Devin? Hmm. It might be smart enough to do this trade. It might be the smartest thing... To make this trade go right now. Because I don't know how well Winnipeg's going to be next year, right? Right? So how about we give you Giroux. See if we can get this trade through. Ha, see what I did. Uh, would that go? Trade rejected. Okay, would they? Uh, Devin Dubnik might be even worth it to do that. I'm going to come back to that trade. I don't think they're going to trade Hanola just like that. I th I'm i going to go one more month. See where we're at. Sp oh, Spurgeon's trade value is up, though. That's something that I just noticed. His value is up slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and check if there's anything there for him. Is there a team looking to get Spurgeon? I'm looking for first-round picks. That's my major thing right now. First-round picks... Would be great. Is my compute is my game gonna work? We found some trades. Leonard, Kubelik, fourth, and Seabrook, Chicago. Really, you can do better than that. Kwat to a second, fourth, and a fourth. No, thank you. Shane Bowers, ah, uh, Timmins, two seconds from Ottawa, two seconds from Vegas. So the most promising one there is probably a guy like Shane Bowers. Uh, we're going to go one more month. We'll go one more month, see where we're at, and then I got to strip this team apart. We're 4-6-0 in our last 10. I don't see the, us getting much better. So let's go up about a week before the trade deadline, see how we're doing. Maybe a team will offer us something. Our head coach wants to talk to us about what, man? After 50 games, we have a serious lack of goal production. Well, let's persuade you. Let's see if you're a team player. I disagree with your opinion. I, I don't care. I know it's our number one issue. We're a bad team, you old fart. I'm that's just it's the way it's gotta be. Why would why would I trade for Logan Couture? That doesn't make any sense, EA. Alex Galchenyuk for a second. I'm gonna hold off on that because I think Galchenyuk could turn into a solid player for us. Right, we also do have Hunter Jones. I ain't trading that. Do I look like a tool? Kovanov for Ch Edmonton, you're funny. Why do you... Re <laughs> the Oilers are not a good team anyways. Okay, we got our first big trade, folks. New Jersey acquires a 2021 20, second round draft pick. Nick Bustad and Larmy 
a goalie prospect to Pittsburgh, Sammy Vatnin, and is I believe that's Andy Green, who was traded IRL to the New York Islanders for quite a big package, actually. No, I don't want Mark Edward Vlasic, San Jose, you bunch of tools. Bully for Vlasic. No! How many times have I got to tell you this? Bjorkstrand. Ah, uh, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. Bjorkstrand. You are currently... Nope. Nope. Uh, nope, you're going to just be coming to a terrible situation, and that probably is not good for your mental health. Matt Dumba for Jonathan Tace. Explain to me why I would do that trade. Yay. Jet Wu and Brisbois to the Columbus Blue Jackets. It's definitely seeing a different Columbus Blue Jackets team. So Oliver Bjorkstrand of Vancouver, a very similar trade that Vancouver did for, I, I, I believe it was Tyler Toffoli today. So that's kind of eerie. That's kind of funny. Shootout victory against Vegas. Oh, we're doing that trade. That's a 2022nd, and they're not the best team. Victor Rask is 79 overall. We're, we're, we're doing that. I'll do Can we get that trade through without Good Branson? Okay, so they want us to take on Good Branson. I'm totally willing to take Good Branson. Just because we have the cap space. And if it's to get a second, Victor Rask, a C on the other, on the other side, man. Go to roster moves. I gotta make, I gotta get everybody in the lineup. So, at a lines, let's see. AHL, who's going to go up there for you? It's going to be... Uh, hey, Matthew Boldy. How is your center? You know what? Let's try you out up there. Okay, that works for me. That works for me. Let's throw somebody in here. And so who's the best scratch player currently? You know where we're going? Friggin', let's go with Kaprasov. Love that idea. <laughs> let's freaking go, boys. Oh, my voice is taking a beating right now. I don't know why. I've just been talking all day. Every day. Okay, that looks uh, that looks good to me. Okay, good. Kaprasov. Good. Good, Kaprasov. <laughs> I love Kaprasov. 23, 29. Ooh. Gustafson to Boston for a first. Chicago. That's a good trade to make. Brown for a... Th Brown from our third round pick Ooh, we'd be taking on Brandon Tanev okay well if we can get Brandon Tanev out of this trade I'm totally down to do that trade re I really don't want to be bring on bringing on that kind of contract Brandon Tanev is not a player I want to be holding on to good Branson's a different story he's just gonna be there you know it's not is he he's an NHL defenseman too or no I guess a little bit to Winnipeg Alec Martinez for Bot McGinn for a first round draft pick and Perot. So potentially losing a, on that Winnipeg. Tr Ooh, Blaze. Okay, this is a guy I'm willing to look at. How are you 80 overall, 23 years of age? This guy grows like a weed in previous franchise modes that I've seen. Uh, but Hunter Jones is a guy that I actually want to hold on to to see how he grows so two straight wins can we pick up a few losses here was too okay johnson is not the best of players he's not a, he's not gonna be in it he's our 20 ugh. for a second i'm willing to do that okay oh that oh we traded you know what i think that trade is worth it we get a second, which is just going to help us out. AHL, let's bring up uh, this guy right here. Doesn't really hurt me. We did trade our backup. Alex Daylock wasn't really helping us all that much. I mean, a 79 overall backup is uh, is not going to be the end of you. When you put in a 63 overall, hopefully that just helps the tank out a little bit. Just a little bit. San Jose. And we get shut out. Eric St Oh, hold Hanola. That is a player I want really badly. Or, mm, that's a really good defenseman. He's like one of the youngest players in the, in the NHL right now, is he not? Ooh, he could be good. He could be a really solid defense more, defenseman for us 
in the near future. Eric Stahl, though. Eric Stahl. We would get Adam Lowry, who's 80 overall, that we can totally plug into the lineup somewhere. And we could even lose him. And we get a third. Winnipeg. Okay. Let's talk, Winnipeg. I want your first round pick next year. Uh, you can even keep your third, but we'll take your first next year. Okay, you can even... Okay, we'll take Adam Lowry, but you you want... You want... You want... You want Matt Zuccarello. They would be over the maximum... Ca okay, we'll, we'll retain on Eric Stahl. But you get those two good players, help you out. They'd still be over the maximum... Okay, we'll retain a bit of Zuccarello. We'll, we'll retain one mil. Winnipeg would be over the lead cap. Okay. Okay, would would you want us to take anybody on? Because I want to get this deal done. Uh, Befuglin for two years. <laughs> you know what? I'm willing to do that. It's two more years. He might even retire this year because he's a 36 overall because I didn't think he's going to come back to the NHL. I'm sorry, Buff. Okay. I think that trade would get it done. Oh, what a trade. Oh my god, Minnesota. What a trade. Things are changing in the NHL for the Minnesota Wild. Things are happening. Okay, let's uh, let's go to edit lines. So we just made a massive, massive trade in the NHL here. So we're getting... Ooh, that is a big, big trade to make, Minnesota. You're tanking, you're tanking. I get it. What a trade. So we're going to put Lowry here, and then we'll put Brown here, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I guess so. We're in shambles now. I know some of you might have disagreed with that trade, but we're getting Vinny Hanola, which I just think is a fantastic guy to bring on to your team for your future, especially if you plan on making a few defensive trades here in the future. So I'm going to... Stop simulation. Stop simulation. Derek Bristol. <laughs> oh, Columbus. Columbus trades their 20, 21 first for Derek Bristard. Oh my god. Uh, sorry, I needed, I needed a drink of water or we're gonna pass out. Okay, stop the simulation. Hanola's going down to the AHL. Can he play in the CHL? I don't think... I can do that. I, I, I can send him to the AHL, get him to play top line minutes, but it's probably the best option at this very point. So we trade Eric Stahl, our highest points, or highest scoring point forward, or point product. You know what? You know what I mean. I'm not even gonna try. Vinny Hanola. I would love to keep you in the NHL, but I think it would be best at this very time for you to go to the AHL, play top minutes, and I mean top minutes. I wanna, I wanna get you into the lineup. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so there we go. He's in the lineup. I do want to keep track of how of how my boy Mr. Kirill Kaprasov does. Hopefully he grows to an NHL caliber player by this ends or this end of the year. So we are going to sim up to the trade deadline. Or are we already there? Oh, we're already there. <laughs> okay, I guess we're checking out. Jared Spurgeon? Have we all traded? No, we haven't already traded Jared Spurgeon. I'm a tool. Sorry. So has he grown in trade value? I think slightly. Let's see what we could potentially get for Jared Spurgeon. We've made trades so far. A lot of first round draft picks coming back to the Minnesota Wild. If we're a rebuilder, we're doing it right. I want to tear this team apart right now so we don't have a chance for the playoffs. So we can hopefully can get a lottery pick this year. Jared Stahl, why, why would we bring him in? Shane Bowers, that's a good player. Timmons, also not too bad. Ah, oh, Vegas. Oh, do we wait on Spurgeon? Do we hold Spurgeon? I think... Colorado, what else do you have here? I did check around the league earlier to see potentially... Or let, you know what, let's... Can we get a trade like this done? Is that a possibility? We will give you Pittsburgh's first this year. 
No, that... Would you want Devin Dubnik? Would you want a fresh Devin... Or have we already traded Devin? We have not. You want Devin Dubnik? They would have too many goalies. We could probably get that trade through. Alexander Newhook is going to be a stud. We already know that. You know what? I would be more comfortable just building through the draft. I think even at the draft, we could swing something for him when teams have the cap space to do so. But I think other than that, I don't see any other players I want to trade at this very moment. I think we're fine for the time being. We're a bad team. I mean, Brodeen, what... Is there anything out there for you? 26 years of age, you're going to be 27 quite soon. Maybe there's something out there. I'm not too positive anyways. Anything? Anything at all? No. Eric Holla, no. Nope. Cot, nope. Kazian, no. Why would I do that to myself? Simmons, no. Why would I do that? Oh! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Okay. Okay, we have found... We have found a trade, a 2021st New York pick. We would be getting Nemestankdanov, Nemestikov, sorry, I don't know why I always do that, and he's a solid overall. He's 80 overall. For 3.4, that covers some cap space. I don't think New York's going to be a good team next year. They could obviously become a good team, but that's a pick we could totally use. If they want Brodeen so bad, we just acquired a guy... That's going to be Brodeen here in a few years' time. Oh, I think we got to do it. We're doing the trade. We're doing that trade. Nemestikov, we get a skilled player. He comes over to the team, and we get... Oh, that... I am so sorry, Minnesota. I... Hey, I'm committing to one side. I'm committing to the absolute rebuild. Good Branson, welcome to the club. <laughs> They're going to be sick. Okay, now I do want to get Nemestikov into the lineup. I'm going to take Brown out. And we're going to throw Nemestikov in as a playmaker. And we'll put him... Would they be a plus one? Y'all yeah, keep him there. That works for me. So I think we are done making trades for the, this very moment. I think there's no need to make any trades at this very second. Kevin Fiala is currently our leading goal scorer, so let's, you know what, let's simulate to the end of the season. I think Jared Spurgeon might be an asset to trade during the offseason. Maybe he has a great end of the season and proves himself. Okay, Kappa Bianco to the New Jersey Devils and Grabner for Wayne Simmons. Si did I say Sim Simmons? Two-thirds and street. That is 100% worth it for Arizona. That's a good trade to make. I, sorry, I can't trade Sutter. Oh, that sucks. I would love to have Timmins on this team, but some things don't work. Mike Condon. I hate him for Montreal because he... Don't even get me started. Edmonton. Is that two straight wins? The hell is this team doing? Uh, we're not trading Kaprasov. Do I look like a fool? 6-3 loss against the St. Louis Blues. And we lose to our expansion brothers in the Columbus Blue Jackets. That's three straight... Four straight losses there. One point in those... Four games. Yikes. We beat Nashville, which is huge. I mean, not huge, but, like, we sh I mean, they should probably whoop us. Okay. Bunch of wins here. I mean, bunch of wins, bunch of losses. We're definitely picking up too many points. I hope we're one of the worst teams in the league. Philadelphia. Okay. We're going to view the draft class just to see what we have our eyes on. I'm, rain I'm in the one to three range. I'm okay with the Rossi. I'm okay with the... I want Lafreniere. I want him so bad. Has our scout picked up anything as it is? Ooh! Oh my god. Jaden Wyman. I freaking knew it. A high elite goalie in year one. Four year ETA, but that's a high elite person to bring on your team. Oh, baby. I like that. So, two straight wins here. Chicago would pummel them. Another win. Minnesota, and a 10-1 to loss. Oh, Jesus, a drubbing. And we beat Colorado. New Jersey. We lose to New Jersey, but we get a point out of it. We're ending the season too good. Can we finish on a few losses here? That's three straight. Can we make it five straight? And we beat, win it, uh, we beat Washington, a shutout for one of our goalies, and we lose our last season of the game. Our season of the game of the season. Whoops. 
33 wins, 42 losses, and 7 OT and shootout combined losses. Personally, I wish we did a little worse to end the season. Gerald Mayhew had 31 goals. The NHL regular season has ended, and let's go ahead and check out the stats. I will check the stats, but I want to see where we finished in the league. Okay, we have a lot of first-round draft picks this year. Colorado was first in the league. Philly was up there. Buffalo was up there. Arizona was up there. Columbus, good for them. Edmonton, so we are fourth last. The worst we could get is seventh, and I'm hoping we win one. if we can win one lottery. That pushes us into good territory. We are the fourth last, but there isn't a big gap between 31st and 28th. Uh, what are the, we, oh, did we have St. Louis? No. We should have gone with that pick, damn it. Okay, but we did get New York's pick next year. Did we get Winnipeg's first? Can I, I want to check that out, actually. Did we get Winnipeg's first this year? I want to, uh, I know, I know this episode has been long, I don't care. Draft board, I want to see. Draft board, we have projected picks we have no we don't have winnipeg damn it i thought did we get ah whatever whatever that's still we have our we have oh colorado's first we have ours and we have pittsburgh's who's around 18th we have this is gonna be a good draft i think we have we have three first we can definitely move up in the draft if we need to so let's go ahead check out the stats to end year number one i am glad to see gary Mayhew being our leading goal scorer, he got that chance on the... Th Remember, he was playing third line minutes, uh, five on five. He played plenty of special team uh, time. His shooting category is incredible. A 30 goal campaign for... I, I don't think he technically counts as a rookie, but a really good season for him in the NHL. His rookie, technically his rookie season, but he doesn't actually count as a rookie because he's too old. Kevin Fiala, 62. Not a bad... Uh, not a, not, I mean, obviously losing Stahl halfway through the season is going to stunt your production, but it was bound to happen. Parise with 55, 26 goals, so we can still put up 25-plus goals a season. That's huge for us. Alex Galchenyuk, not the best. Not the best. How did Nemestikov do with us? 14 points in 24 games? Better pace than he had in... Uh, in in uh, with the Rangers. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, guy. Donato, 33, minus 27. Ah, oh, not too shabby. You got Adam Lowry, Greenway with 30. Adam, how, how did you do with us? 14 points in 24 games. So they were, I mean, not the best plus minus, but it happens when we're such a god-awful team. Greenway is still at an 80 overall, 30 points, ain't too shabby on this kind of team. Kunin with 24, so we uh, finished pretty solid. Hartman with 14, or minus 14, yikes. Felino minus 20. 10 goals for Hartman, though, so he can put up a few goals if need be. That's good. We, I do like him. I think when we're a better team overall, he's going to be uh, a big part of our bottom six, especially if he stays cheap. Matt Dumba, 60 points. 60 points to end the regular season, minus 14, so imagine how good he would be if we were a better overall team. That is going to be huge. Sutter still playing good hockey at 35 years of age, 39 points, minus 15 though. Goaltending obviously didn't help that out. Jared Spurgeon, who is a guy that I'm looking at trading during the draft, potentially when there's a few prospects in this or on the block that we can definitely go for, especially in year number one. Pattern and Sealer were just... Bad. Goaltending. Devin Dubnik. He went down in both categories. Uh, this guy right here. I'm so, so sorry. 60 what? 63 overall. Low fringe starter. Hey, you're never going to get that experience again, bud. So it might as well enjoy it. So we're going to check out the entire league stats. We're going to check out the entire league stats. See how we did. And that'll be the end of year Number one regular season. Capo Caco is going to win the Calder Trophy. IRL, it's going to go to... Ooh. You know what? Kel McCarr has a case. He's a defenseman. 12 less points. Way better plus minus. I know plus minus is a weird stat, but... Yeah, you never know. I think it'll go to Capo just because of the point differential. 
Goaltending, your best goalie of the year goes to... Oh, Carey Price really fell off. Carey Price. Price, my god. He had a 921. Uh, he might be in the conversation. I think he'll win it. Carey Price will win it. He has the best save percentage and one of the best goals against in the league. It's not always about wins, folks. Defense. It's going to Carlson. Too much of a di point differential between Riley and Carlson. Uh, it's going to go to John Carlson. What an absolute beauty. Definitely a franchise defenseman. Uh, who's the best player in the league? Or has the most points? Alexander Ovechkin with 68 goals. Count him. I wish he would get this or get that this year, but I doubt that'll happen. His teammate, Evgeny Kuznetsov, Michael Crosby, Kucherov, McDavid, who. McDavid didn't get 100. It's just stupid. I mean, the Oilers were just bad this year. Obviously, leading the league by 20 goals. Most assists. 80 for Kuznetsov. Now, I do want to check the Iowa Wild. The Iowa Wild. I do want to see how Kaprasov ended. 63 goals, 102 points. I haven't seen a 100-point season in the AHL. In a very, very long time. What a season. He's obviously winning some awards there. I mean, friggin' Vili Hinola had a fantastic end. Uh, seven points ain't too shabby. Ooh, he's, I do like him. He did come over to an arguably worse team. Matthew Boldy is up to a 70. There's no other notable guys there in the AHL goaltending. We were not a good team this year in the AHL, but uh, it happens. I think we made the right trades going forward. A lot of firsts, a lot of assets to bring over to Minnesota, and that's exactly what we needed to do. If you if you disagree with me, tell me why, but that's the decision I made. I think I'm pretty smart when it comes to this game. If you have any suggestions going to the draft, it all depends on a lottery, but I do want to hear your thoughts. Thank you very much. If you've enjoyed this one, please leave a like, leave a comment, Share with people who you think may enjoy this sort of thing. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.